Coburg, Melbourne. Fine November day, and a champion racing car is being readied for another race. It's the Norm Beachy Holden Monaro GTS 350. The big brutal machine has run six events counting towards the Australian Touring Car Championship. In two days, it will race the last at Simmons Plains in Tasmania. A gruelling, dramatic quest for honours over five states. You right, Louis? To Beachy and his crew, it hardly seems possible that the last race is looming. Soon there'll be rest from the endless pressures of competition. Relief from the all-night workshop sessions, the setbacks, the heartbreaks. Nine months of it. Readying the Monaro for race seven is an absorbing task. The first event of the season seems so distant. And the start of Calder in round one of the Australian Touring Car Championship. And Mustang driver Alan Moffat has taken the lead. Right on his tail, the defending title holder, Ian Gagan. But he's going to need plenty of skill and speed to down Moffat. Look at him go! And there's Norm Beachy in his Holden Monaro. He's got past both Bob Jane and Gagan as though they were standing still. And he's after Moffat, the leader. The Monaro's unbelievably fast. Moffat had better watch out. And now he's on his tail. Look at Beachy pressuring the Mustang. The Monaro's winning hands down in the power department, but the Mustang's got an advantage under brakes and Moffat's clinging to his lead. This is a fantastic race for Beachy's new car, a homemade car, stirring up an expensive factory special. Back in the rut, it's a big battle between the Porsches of Jim McEwen and Brian Foley. This is nearly as good as the dice for the lead. There's Moffat coming up to lap Bob Jane, and Beachy's missing. Word from the pit says that he's punched in a tyre after flipping a slower car. That's bad luck. McEwen now in command, and there's Jane pulling into the pits. With Beachy and Jane held up, nothing can stop Moffat, and he's on his way to a round one win. Memories of that first round reflect disappointment and annoyance. After being measurably faster than the opposition, a collision and subsequent tyre failure lead to a lowly placing. But Norm Beachy, veteran campaigner of Australian motorsport, doesn't dwell on mishap. To Beachy, Motorsport is a mixture of good and bad, of depression and elation. The kind of elation that comes with victory. And they're on in round two of the Australian Touring Car Championship. It's a great start. Gagan grabbed the lead, but look at Beachy. He's come through the second spot in only a few yards. There they go, up the hill, and Beachy's gone through to the lead. He's got a tremendous power advantage over the other cars. Gagan is second, then Moffat, then Jane. Up on the top of the mountain now. Still the same order. Beachy, Gagan, Moffat and Jane. Down through the S's and Beachy still in command. Arrow sounding glorious. And there they are. Gagan's leading. Gagan leading from Moffat. And there's Beachy back in third behind Moffat. First time past the pits. Gagan from Moffat. A tremendous duel shaping up here. And oh, another surprise. Moffat's missing. Word from the pits that the Mustang's blown some plugs and he might be up. That put Beachy back into second, but he's not getting it easy. Bob James pushing him pretty hard, giving him no peace at all. Gagan still well out in front. He'll take some catching. Beachy and Jane have fought. James spots the Mustang and Warren Elbow. Well, it's bad. But that takes the pressure off Beachy. And now he's after Gagan. And it looks as though the Mustang's slowing. It's not handling too well. Look at Beachy through the essence. Much faster. Two laps to go, and Beachy's right on his tail. It looks as though he's about to take the lead right here in front of us. Yes, there he goes! Norm Beachy's taking the lead, and Gagan's definitely slowing. Beachy's got it sewn up. Here they are at the S's. Look at the march of Beachy's going away to win easy. Last time into Murray's, and here comes Beachy to get the checkered flag. A tremendous win for Norm Beachy. Well, if he can keep that up, he'll inject some real life into this year's championship. Great driver, great car, good preparation. That's the sort of combination you need to win top motor races. Round two of the championship and a win. Victory at Bathurst and by a clear margin. Nine points towards the championship point score. And for Beachy, the failure of Calder is no longer a conversation piece.
team morale is high. They know more than ever that the card is a potential title winner. Confidence is running high, and the next round is to be run on Beach's home track. No doubt about who won the jump. Look at Beachy. He's made the others look like billy carts as they boom down the finish straight towards Shell. Here they come up to Peters. A corner of a lap, and look at the margin. Beachy, Jagan, Moffat, and Jane. And down the straight, Beachy's just flying away. Lukey's at the bottom of the main straight. Holden's oh, got a dozen lengths on Jagan. What a fantastic first lap. Almost unbelievable. Still the same order as Peters again. But Moffat's making a move on Jagan, and he's going through. And now Moffat's chasing Peters, but he'll need to go pretty fast to catch the Holden. It's going like a rocket. Through Peters, Beachy's still clear, and Jagan's dropping back. The others are simply too fast. This is a fantastic display by Beachy. Moffat's not gaining, and we're not surprised. The Holden's passed down the straight much quicker than the Mustang. There's the margin at Lukey's. Moffat's still relying on his brakes to make up lost ground, but when he grabs back, Beachy steals again under power. He's well and truly in command. Peters again. Down the straight, Beachy's pulling away. Moffat's definitely slowing, and Jacob's catching it. Up they go into Peters, in goes Moffat, and here comes Gagan. Gagan's right on Moffat's tail now. The Red Mustang slowing with engine trouble, and there he goes, right in front of the grandstand. But up in front, it's all Beachy. Here he comes, last lap, heading towards the checkered flag. Yes, there it is, and all the way went for Norm Beachy. That's his second in a row. Unlike Bathurst, he led all the way today in a great display of superiority. I'm sure everyone here would agree that the issue was never in doubt. Right from the moment the flag dropped, it was beachy all the way. Another tremendous drive. Anthony Airlines of Australia announcing the departure of flight 117 to Launceston. Would passengers please board their aircraft through gate 2? Sandown Park and the second win in a row. Another demonstration of superiority. Beachy is now a clear point score leader after three races. His cheerful manner reflects his confidence. Stormin Norman, as his fans call him, is entertaining thoughts that he might well storm through to season's honours. There are still four races to go. Still more disappointments to come. Pretty windy out there as the flag drops. It's also wet and the Porsche Foley gets the best of the start. But as soon as they hit the first stretch of straight, Moffat boosts his Mustang into the lead and away he goes. He's got rain tires aboard and while the track's wet, he's getting plenty of traction. While his dry tire rivals are in trouble. But if that rain goes, the tables will be turned and he'll be in difficulty. There's Beachy, he's moving past Foley in the second. But Moffat's going to take some catches. While the track's wet, Beachy's got little hope of getting to the Mustang. But the clouds look as though they might be rolling away. Uh oh, there's a shot. Gagan's come through, past Beachy, to pressure Moffat. The track's dry, and Moffat's wet tyres are overheating. Gagan's got him. There he goes, through into first. There's a brilliant tyre decision. It worked out just right. He gambled that the rain would disappear, and it worked. And there's Moffat, he's out. Some sort of mechanical trouble, that's bad luck after a great drive. We've just heard that Beachy had a slipping clutch, which is most likely why Gagan got past him. Here he is, trying hard to take back the gap, but Gagan's not going to give this one up without a fight. He's got the wing turned up full and he's going like a rocket. Here's the last lap, and victory to the defending title holder Ian Gagan. What, oh, what tremendous tactics. Well and truly deserved this victory. Bad luck for Beachy and Moffat. Beachy won't forget the dramas of Manila in a hurry. Rain leading to a wet, greasy track and conditions that spell danger. The defending title holder Ian Gagan deserved his win, and Beachy doesn't begrudge him his nine points. But the second earned him six, enough to maintain his point score lead. Wonder what would have happened had the track been dry for the entire race. Like it, Warwick Farm. And the little Porsche McCunes has stolen a march on the big iron, and he's into the lead. There's, they're right on his hammer as they stream towards Paddock. And, and look at this! There's a crash coming up! Oh, 
Hoffman and Gagan have crashed, and McEwen's out on his own, and what's left of the field runs into the Hume Street. We've just heard that Hoffman and Gagan are all right, but their cars are badly damaged. Well, it seems Moffat lost it and Gagan just couldn't avoid the spinning car. Well, that's taken some fire out of the race. The field looks tremendous as it bunches up under brakes. Green corner, Mark James in second, but Beachy right on his hammer. This is a tremendous duel. Beachy's all over him under power, but James got better brakes. And they're pretty even through this section of the track. Here they come again, and this time, yes, he's done it, he's through. Beachy moves up to second, but a long way behind McEwen, who's really fine. There's Beachy up from under shell. McEwen is still well clear. James won't give in, he's still clinging on to Beachy. And if they both catch McEwen, this could be interesting. McEwen through the S's. He's going to take some catching. And Beachy's determined to do just that. He's trying pretty hard. Here's the margin, here's the margin as they tear into Creek with the race half gone. But Beachy's not going to do it. He's broken an axle. The pressure's off McEwen. But is it? James having a go now. And look at him, fleet that Mustang around. But he hasn't got enough time, and the race is McEwen. What a tremendous turn up for the moon. Gagan and Moffat crash, Beachy retires, and the race goes to McEwen's course. What a race of surprises. Ladies and gentlemen, that's it, Airlines, flight 117. The track was dry at Warwick Farm, but five seconds behind winner McEwen at half distance and an axle breaks, while gaining with victory in sight. It's another disappointing blow. Only bright point is that main rivals Gagan and Moffat also fail to increase their scores. It's fickle. Two wins in a row and then retirement. Two races to go. Beachy must win one to clinch the title. Now oh, it's Gagan who gets the break as they race up his trouble. Hey, that looks bad. It's Chris Brown. Chris Brown, and we'll let you know as soon as possible if he's okay. Meantime, Gagan still holds down the lead, but Beachy right on his tail. Moffat, Moffat in third, then McEwen. Oh, Beachy's gone into the lead. Gagan's dropping back with some sort of trouble. Remembering that the Mustang was badly damaged in that Warwick Farm crash only a week ago, we're not surprised. That puts Beachy in the box seat because Lakeside's not an easy circuit to pass on. And he'll cover himself pretty well. There's Gagan. There's Gagan going back into the pits for attention. He must be a very disappointed driver. But it's Beachy belting along up in front and the Holden's going well. Now if he can win this one, he'll wrap up the championship. Bob Jane, though, isn't going to let him post an easy win. Look at him, pressure. There's Moffat, way down. He got black flags for attempting to pass while the yellow flag was out during the accident. Uh, it's a pity, because Moffat was very quick in practice, and he would have pushed Beachy very hard. James going very hard, but he's losing a bit of ground. Beachy, Beachy, definitely in full command. Moffat again, way down. Beachy's going to win this one well. No one's going to get near to him. The car's performing... Last the lap, and, this and Beachy and his car are rushing to victory, well in front. Third win of the season. When they cross the line, the championship is virtually theirs. It's a moment Beachy will never forget. One more race to wrap up the season. Beachy cannot be beaten for the title. Mustang driver Bob Jane can equal his point score if he wins Simmons Plains, but Beachy will get the decision on a countback. In effect, Beachy doesn't have to run the Tasmanian race, but he will, to keep faith with the promoter, the fans, and his sponsors. Beachy is a sportsman first. 
champion racing car driver, second. The first practice session for the championship car will be getting underway in about half an hour's time. Now they'll run two time trials at the side starting positions, and uh, we expect quite a battle because that top position. Scrutineering is for the BG car is almost anticlimactic. Win or lose tomorrow, the title is his. 24 hours will see him crowned Australian touring car champion. Beachy feels a strange emotion as the officials check out the machine. And there's Alan Moffat going out for a trial. And he will feel it even more strangely when he goes to the line tomorrow. Australian touring car champion. Proud. Yes, he's proud that he's beaten the best of them and proud that he's done it decisively. Ah, Moffat's trailing a big cloud of smoke. As Beachy goes out for time trials to determine his start position, his major rival Alan Moffat brings in his new car. It has serious engine problems. Moffat's race will end here, for repairs are impossible. Beachy doesn't know it yet, but he will join Moffat on the sidelines. As the yellow car booms through its first practice lap, there's sudden loss of power, and suddenly the effort of the long haul from Melbourne is in jeopardy. Beachy will run but three laps of practice. His mechanic will hold the time board out only once. The expense of shipping the car, airfares, accommodation, all for three laps. Well, Lou, you just have a bit of a look at those. Yeah. Well, that one looks as though it's going the same way, no? Yeah, well, I reckon we've got a bit of a problem there, Lou, really. Another all-night workshop session looms. The engine will have to be pulled down to find out the trouble. It has to be in the top end. Could try a rebuild, but I don't know if we've got enough bits. Ah, oh, make a bloke mad. Last race of the season, and we look like being a non-starter. Look, um, you know, what, what do you think of the program? Well, I think this role has to be replaced, no? The decision finally has to be made. Beachy cannot risk damaging the complex and expensive machine. He is too old a hand to throw away thousands of dollars. He will not start. But he will another day, for another valuable developmental lesson has been learnt. Yeah, well, you're out of the way, Norm. It's bad luck for you, I know, but that leaves uh, one less for us to beat. Here's the start, and McEwen's got the jump again. Fastest qualifier, Bob James, sliding all over the place. Yes, it's McEwen in the Porsche. He's going to be first into the hairpin, and he'll take some catching in the rain. Thompson second, then Jane, who lost a lot of ground with his trouble off the line. And down the back straight they go. Look at the spray. It'll be interesting to see whether the big cars can take him back. It's Warwick Farm all over again. Into the S's near the pits, and Thompson's trying hard, but he can't get to the flying McEwen. And here comes Jane, he's really flying. But I don't think they're going to do it. The Porsche is home in the wet, and if the rain keeps up, the race is his. For Norm Beachy, it's an odd experience to spectate at a championship event, not to be out there with them, after the effort of getting his car and crew to Simmons Plains. Well, quite frankly, Lou, that wraps it up for the year, you know. It's a, we can't start, so that's it, you know. With Beachy out, things are easier for McEwen, and he splashes through the rain to an easy win, earning enough points to come second in the title. Bob Jane ends the season in third place. A one, two, three for Shell. For Norm Beachy, Simmons Plains is a mixture of emotions. Disappointment at mechanical failure. Elation at congratulating a teammate. It's a simple display of sportsmanship worthy of a champion. Australian touring car champion.